Well, hello everyone and welcome to our webinar on the Student Exchange Visitor Information System and information about your immigration status. For those of you that are considering attending Lewis or for those of you that are currently enrolled students, we typically hold a very detailed long orientation program that covers a lot of information. And we think all of the information of course is important to you. This webinar today is going to highlight the key and most important information that we think we need uh, you to learn. So we'll recommend to you that you uh, can go back and forth, stop and reread this information uh, at your convenience whenever you can. My name is uh, Michael Fichetti. I'm the director of the International Student and Global Scholar Office. Again, thank you for being with us today. So the main purpose today of the conversation is to talk a bit more about uh, your immigration status and requirements, which of course are very important as you journey uh, as a new member of the Lewis uh, family and toward your successful completion of your degree program. The SEVA system or Student Exchange Visitor Information, SEVIS, S-E-V-I-S for short, is an internet-based program that basically collects and maintains information on your status that I am responsible for with several other of my colleagues in the International Affairs Office. One of my titles is the primary designated school official. So I oversee the system and make sure that you're maintaining your immigration status as a student at Lewis. And I'll talk a little bit more about that in just a minute. So not only are we collecting information data uh, for uh, our relationship with the immigration service, but also allowing you to have several benefits like working in the United States while you're a student. And I'll talk a little bit about that in just a minute. And so we have a relationship. We are in a partnership between you, the student, and myself as the administrator or primary designated school official at Lewis in maintaining your immigration status. So we do have uh, reporting deadlines. And in general, if anything changes with your immigration status, meaning your address, your degree program. So say you change your degree program, which does happen, whether on the undergraduate or the graduate level, we respectfully ask you as a requirement with immigration that you let our office know when a change occurs with anything concerning your status, again, your address, your degree program within 10 days of that change. Now, in terms of maintaining your legal status, there are two distinct differences. If you're an undergraduate student, you're required to study a minimum of 12 credits. Most classes equal three credits per class. So on average, if you're being asked to do 12 credits, that would be a total of four classes. You can take more than that, but the minimum that you need to take to maintain a legal status in the fall or spring semesters is 12 credits. If you're a graduate student, there is a difference uh, between 12 and you would be required to do nine credits or three classes. Now keep in mind as a grad student, you would be taking classes in what are called eight week sessions rather than the traditional 16 week academic term or session. Now you also cannot average that required amount of credits between semesters. That's each semester of your study. So you can't be what we would refer to as being under enrolled in one semester and then take extra credits in the next semester to kind of average uh, 12 credits, um, or for example, over two semesters, say fall, spring, if you're an undergraduate, 24 credits or a graduate student, 18 credits. So if you're not able to be full-time, there is a process that you would go through in our office, uh, which is a, a reduced course load process. And there is a specific form that we, we would ask you to fill out. And in most cases, there are several reasons that somebody can be under-enrolled. Normally that would be for an academic re reason, 
Uh, and the other reason would be for a medical reason. And both would need to be documented uh, through your department and with my office. Now, a lot of questions come up uh, about the opportunity to take online classes. Now, keep in mind, traditionally speaking, uh, students are coming into the United States to take face-to-face -face classes, right? Why would you come all the way into the United States, into Lewis, to take all of your classes online, which technically you could do from home? Right now, uh, students uh, are normally expected to take no more than one online class in a semester. So if you're taking three classes as a grad student, or nine credits, one of those classes or three credits each session can be an online class. If you're an undergraduate or taking 12 credits, one of those classes, again, three credits, so nine out of the 12 would be face-to-face. -face. The remaining three credits to equal 12 credits needs to be online. However, as some of you already may know, uh, we would recommend that you keep in touch with our office after arriving on campus. And right now, uh, because of COVID-19, Immigration is allowing students to take more than one online class a semester. However, please note that that may change in the future. And will the expectation will be that you take only one online class uh, and not more than one online class in what we refer to as a hybrid model. So the number one advice I would give you about this particular uh, information is when in doubt, check with our office and we can update you. We also get a lot of questions about employment. And this is a great way to balance your academic studies in the classroom with an experiential learning or practical based opportunity to develop skill sets that maybe you have brought to the program from your home country or new ones that you're going to be developing as a new student in your program. Students are allowed to work on campus. And the only restriction is the amount of hours that you can work when you, we are in an academic session. So when classes are taking place, either in the fall or in the spring, students can only work up to 20 hours a week when you are studying. Now, during breaks or holidays, and in the summer specifically, if a student is starting in the fall or the spring, may work more than 20 hours. They can work technically as many hours as they want, normally around 40 hours. So that's a wonderful opportunity to not only practice your, your English language skills, but also become a part, a more intimate part of the Lewis community and get to know people on the campus. Now for students that would be interested in working on campus, you are eligible to work no more than 30 days before a semester starts. And why that is allowed is that we have a lot of students that will come in prior to beginning their studies. Of course, you have to be registered for classes full time in order to be eligible to work, but it's a great opportunity. We also at times will have students who are enrolled in two different schools. It's not very common uh, that would be eligible to uh, take classes at another school, but also work where their main I-20 is, is housed. So for example, if you're a student at Lewis and you're gonna take classes at, a, at another school, you can continue to work at Lewis while taking classes at another school. Now, there are two other opportunities to work beyond working on campus. One of those options is what's known as curricular practical training, or for short, CPT. Now, this often is referred to as an internship, uh, cooperative education opportunity, or a learning practicum that, in some cases, uh, may be a requirement for someone's degree program. However, in other cases, it is a wonderful opportunity, as I mentioned earlier, to receive some experiential learning, practical-based skill set development that can be balanced with and complement your academic plan or course of study. Now, this occurs while you are a student and would be external 
to Lewis University. So this is not when we were talking earlier about on-campus work, this is a bit different. This is where a student may be working off campus and you need to seek approval from the university. It can be again, part-time or full-time, but it must be, and this is the key word, integral to or a requirement of your academic program. Now, again, you probably already know this because we've talked about this a little bit already, is that, of course, you have to be enrolled in classes and you would need to receive a job offer and then determine with your academic advisor or program director if it is integral or fits into your degree plan, as I mentioned earlier. Now, you'll see on the right side of the screen, although I won't go into this detail very much, and again, you can find more detailed information, the requirements and the documents on our website under working in the United States. But what I wanna highlight right now is the relationship between your advisor, your program director, our office and the team, not just myself, but the team in international affairs and, and your employer is crucial. Now, whether you start in step one, step two or step three, don't worry about that. The key part of this information that I want you to remember or go back to and listen to again is that we ask you to have a dialogue with your advisor and with our office in order to get approval. The good thing about CPT or curricular practical training is that there is no extra fees involved. You don't have to submit anything into the immigration services uh, offices. We approve that uh, opportunity to work at Lewis University, and that is my, one of my main roles. So that's really, really good to know. One last thing before we talk about the other uh, uh, employment opportunity, which is optional practical training. We would ask that you give uh, your advisor in our office about a two week window or notice to process your paperwork. So again, another um, important thing to remember is don't wait until the last minute to submit your paperwork. Lastly, in terms of employment for off campus, and I'll just speak briefly about this now, is optional practical training. And this is an opportunity to apply for work once you graduate. So as long as you're maintaining your immigration status, being in full time, right, and not having any breaks except say in the summer, that is optional. You don't have to start in the uh, study in the summer uh, if, you're, if you begin your, your studies in the fall or the spring semester is optional practical training. And this is a one-year benefit for uh, students who are in either a STEM or a non-STEM field to work off campus. If a student is in a STEM field or science, technology, engineering, or mathematical field, they have up to a possible three-year opportunity to work uh, part-time or full-time. And so that process is a little more detailed. We don't want to give too much information right now. Again, this is online, but know that this opportunity exists. And what's nice about doing potentially CPT is that a lot of students who do CPT will transition into doing OPT when they graduate with the same employer. So there's a great benefit of being able to connect these two working opportunities. Well, we don't like to talk about this much, but you know, should a student be suspended or terminated or there be an issue that would affect their immigration status, that can affect one's ability to be able to work uh, for CPT or OPT. It's very rare that it comes up. I think the key takeaway with this is continue to maintain your status and when in doubt, always work with our office if you have any questions concerning your immigration status so nothing like this would happen. If there is an opportunity to graduate early or complete your program, and that does happen, let us know immediately so that you can apply not only for early graduation officially through our registrar's office, but in terms of applying for the benefits to work, we would have to update your paperwork to reflect that you're going to be graduating earlier so that we can process things like OPT when you graduate so that you can work. 
All right, again, important reminders. If there are any changes to your schedule or your program, please let us know and keep all of your forms updated. When in doubt, always maintain communication with our office. You can email us. We now have appointments, not only face-to-face, -face, but virtually, if that's convenient for you, if you live off campus. And always check with us if you're going to be updating your records, if you're going to be traveling, or, or if you're going to be eventually transferring or doing another degree program at Lewis or at another school. And again, thank you. Uh, it's a pleasure to be able to provide information from our, the International Affairs uh, uh, Department and office, and of course, the International Student Services and Global Scholars office. Being able to be here for you, being able to dialogue with you, being able to provide information for you is the number one priority of our office so that you will have uh, successful uh, completion of your degree program as you become a member of the Lewis family. Good luck to you. We look forward to talking to you soon.